we are so we are in our next session and the next session so where we have started we have started that <clears throat> the real notion of yoga is that yoga is the highest state of mindfulness or meditation what meditation does it reveals the knowledge of the reality and what is that reality that reality is my true nature it is one common element present in every being on this universe that is pure consciousness so in the second sutra we understood the process emptying the mind of its content results into the third sutra that i reveal my true nature what is my true nature made up of it is made up of permanent peace pure awareness truth wisdom and love <clears throat> You know, once this principle settles into your mind, will you seek and expect love from someone outside? Then you will only express love and peace and happiness to the others. Why? Because my nature is that. Where the blame, complain and reaction will go, it will not find any place in your mind. So at least 80% of the materials that causes the stress is gone. Rest 20% depends on your practice. So in the fourth sutra, we understood a non-meditator will continue to behave, act, think in the same way. There is no possibility. My master used to say that the humility is a hypocrisy for a non-meditator. Think of it. <laughs> I am before my boss. <clears throat> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Boss is gone. How crazy this guy. I have been doing it. Humility is a sign of hypocrisy for the non-meditator. It does not mean that everyone has to practice meditation. There are many people who live at the heightened state of awareness. No, but a general understanding. So <laughs> then we moved into the fifth sutra. Vrataya panchataya kleshta akleshta. So all these thought pattern, huh? all these thoughts that enters in our mind, they are either painful or non-painful. So we have understood that part. <clears throat> now all those trillions of the thoughts, think of it. Conscious level of thoughts, maybe in thousands every day. Second layer, deeper than that, you have hundreds of thousands of thoughts at the subconscious level. Deeper than that, you have habitual thoughts. Deeper than that, you have impulsive. Deeper than that, you have huh? instinctive thought pattern. And deeper than that, you have the accumulated impressions of all those thoughts in the seed form. You have to empty all of them. So now the master is saying that all these thoughts can be classified into five groups. Today we are taking up that five groups of thought. In Sanskrit, it is written as Pramana Viparyaya Vikalpa Nidra Smriti. The master will amaze you. Five groups of thoughts. 
first understand their name, the first group of thought is the right notion, or you can say right perception, or you can say the tr thoughts about the fact and the truth, real cognition. That is the first group. Second group is just the opposite, the wrong perception, the wrong notion, wrong cognition, wrong cognition. Third group of the thoughts, fancies and imagination. Fourth group of thoughts, now it will amaze you. It is sleep. Fifth is memory. So there are five groups of thoughts that we live, we think, we from which we act every day. Why don't you understand? I have told you hundreds of times to put the cup in the self. You know, I have a lot of things to do in the kitchen. No, I'm not blaming anyone. You know, I'm just making a statement. <laughs> you see that? What kind of a thought? It is definitely a painful thought. It has come out from my reaction. So all the five groups of thoughts are either painful or non-painful. Let me use the restroom and come back. Positive thought, fact, real cognition. Let me, let me prepare a tea for you. Normal thought. Let me drive to my home and the work. It's a fact. You see that these thoughts do not create any problem in our life. Right? Now convert this into a wrong perception. Even if I'm using 10-year-old car, it is running fine, but my mind says, oh, I have no resources. I'm still using the same car. Wrong notion. See that? How many times we think like this? It is painful. Everything is right. Car is running fine, whether it is five years old or 10 years old. Hmm? I will not tell you the name. There was a beautiful woman in New Jersey who used to come for private lessons at my home. And uh, from the, she lives somewhere on the Route 9 in English town. One day she was absent. So she texted me, I did not find the matching lipstick. That is why I'm not coming today for your session. My goodness. It is a fact, I tell you. I laughed. I lost a couple of hundred dollars. That's a totally different thing. <laughs> but I laughed. She's over 65 now. She looks beautiful, no doubt. She is beautiful. But I depend on something outside. See the wrong notion. Now I project myself that I'm still young, having a gray beard, fancies and imagination. Will it be painful or non-painful? Think of it. When I was only hardly 27, 28, I have told Anne a couple of times, I have a gray beard at that age, inherited. So I never made it black. So I used to travel in a bus. So Indian custom is that if you see an old guy, you know, which appears as old, uh, so younger people used to say, uh, uncle, give me sight. And they used to say me. Even I felt that they are younger than me. They are older than me. And I used to say, bless you, my son. But it took me a couple of months to, to accept that fact. <laughs> this is the way. You see that how these thought pattern causes you the problem in your life.
what the master is saying empty the mind of its content leads you to the calm mind and that calm and silent mind reflects your true nature and once you know your true nature it is irreversible process that is the beauty once you discover that permanent state of the peace your body may have a acute pain your mind will reflect you will say the body has an acute pain but i'm happy no issue that is the journey of meditation and mindfulness are you understanding the way you are given an anesthesia if you're right arm is paining anesthesia no pain in the right arm you experience pain in the body but you are able to disconnect that pain from your true nature that is the journey of higher meditation so five groups of thoughts first is Factual. What is fact? Observed fact. I see a beautiful woman. She is beautiful. You all are beautiful. There is one more handsome. I should appreciate what is beautiful. But if I give value, liking and disliking, I want to possess it, a wrong notion starts. Same thing, object is the same. Women is still the beautiful. But my mind creates a thought pattern because of impulsive, habitual, instinctive nature that we received since our birth. We have to change this default setting of the mind, which is the cause of the misery. So the same beautiful women, I recall that event, and there is a one handsome guy who had been a very good student of mine and knows it, uh, he's Boris. So that's a quite interesting incident so that I can tell you. You see that how the wrong notion, the second group of the thought takes over you. That is extremely dangerous, but it was a hilarious uh, real life story so Anne knows that I shaved, I became totally bald and I shaved my beard. So Boris used to, they, they both, Boris and that beautiful woman used to attend my classes. Boris hugged me a couple of times. This is what I always want you to look like. And the beautiful women told me, you look crazy. Grow your beard. I'm answering you how the wrong notions are created. The next day, the Boris brought me, you know, the trimmer and uh, the shaver, you know, big machine, which costed uh, something around $70. You have to do shave every every. Third day. I said, I will do it. And that beautiful movement told me that don't shave it. I said, I will do it. <laughs> we are influenced by the society, by the people, by our appearance, by whatever we are doing, and we create a false notion in our head. You don't remain what you are. That creates the second group of thoughts. Very dangerous. You need not to give me a certification that uh, how should I look like, but I agree to both of them. You have to play your role. <laughs> Third group of thoughts are you are in pain, you are in suffering, you fought with your near and dear ones, you close your eyes, 
had I been with some that guy who has been wonderful, imagination, fancies, daydreaming. I dream in the waking state. Do you understand what I'm saying? I start dreaming in a waking state. I look at BMW, oh, this is what a beautiful car. I go back home, I had a liking, I start thinking, I lie down, but I must dream of that car before I sleep. Are you understanding that? Third group of thoughts. We all have the same, more or less the same experiences. You cannot reject this notion, this understanding. No one can reject this understanding. We continue to have these thoughts. Three group of thoughts. Fourth group is the sleep. I experience the absence of thoughts. When I wake up, I know I had refreshed. I had a sound sleep. Absence of Experience of absence, but below that experience of absence, there are many layers of the thoughts are going on. That shapes my morning. You wake up in the morning, I'm totally upset and I'm tired. How many hours you slept? Nine hours. <laughs> and I'm still tired. Those thoughts have caused you the problem. Understand that. Look at this. So the moment you feel in the morning you are upset, it is because of those thought patterns in your life. How deeper understanding this master has. By simply one liner, he says, Pramana viparya vikalpa nidra smriti panchatayaha. We'll go a little deeper into all every group of the thoughts. And the fifth, we already know, the memory. The wife complains to the husband, 10 years ago, you insulted my mom and dad. I still remember. How many times my husband gave me the best in from his life? We I don't remember. Good memory. <laughs> Good memory. <laughs> you see that? Good memory. Is it really a good memory? <laughs> you know, just an example. I'm not complaining about women or men, you know. It applies to both of us. So the memories also haunts in the form of a thought, in form of an appearance. I had a wonderful, uh, mm, I'm not naming him, I'm not telling you the name. A previous incident with the Boris was a wonderful incident related to me. That's why I told you that he is Boris. So he lived in the Princeton. He was 65. I used to go to him for private lessons for almost three to four years. Now he is no more and can recall it, but need not to name it. Every time I went to him and he said, when I was 40, there was no problem. But my friend, you are 65 now. The body is subject to change. See them how the memories causes the problem. Simple, simple way to understand. I don't want to accept. I don't want to accept that I'm aging. My body huh, is now 61 years old. It has its own limitation. Let me respect that limitation and continue the journey. So this is another kind of the memory that causes you the trouble. Do you see that? So the master says, 
these five groups of thoughts that are either painful or non-painful. The right perception also causes the pain. Look at all of them, how beautiful they are. I'm not so that, you know, I'm seeing the fact. Then why have to compare? Painful, non-painful. A single thought may become painful and maybe non-painful. A memory may become painful, non-painful. Wrong notion may become painful or not painful. Do you see that? Do you understand that? We have understood all these thoughts are either painful and non-painful. And all these thoughts are grouped into five categories. So recognize, become aware what I'm looking, what kind of a thought is entering into my mind. Hold on. There you start working on the mind. The moment you are aware, now you see the point. That is what the master is saying. The mind is working on you. Nobody can stop you being crazy. And when you are working on the mind, even in the entire world is crazy. You live in calmness and peace. I'm saying the world around you, near you, is the craziest. And still you know, thank you. Very good. I'm learning how to increase my endurance living in this environment, either at office or at home or with near and the dear ones. I like you all are thinking. <laughs> you all are. That's we should think because we have to reshape our life. The entire journey of meditation is a conscious evolution and transformation. In a single phrase. It is not that, you know, I focus, you know, on the breath and I feel relaxed, remain mindful. Why don't you remain mindful? You see that sometimes we also say like this. I'm not mindful. I'm already angry. Why don't you, why you are not mindful? It will not work. Unless you understand the entire thought pattern, the five groups of thoughts. And then, why are you not mindful? So I'm using a right statement for a wrong, wrong, wrong way. And sometimes we start blaming others unnecessarily. I live in wrong notion. You drop all this by becoming aware. Now see that one, one thing I told you, you wake up in the morning, you are fresh and calm. How you can remain fresh and calm? At least for 10 minutes, the very first practice, or relax yourself completely before you go to sleep. You don't have 10 minutes? No, I'm very busy. Why you are busy? Because those painful thoughts are moving in your mind. Simple reason. The mind is always running, running and running. So you don't have time to do the practice. That will calm you down, relax you down, so that you can do any work that takes three hours in only one hour. I can guarantee you. I have a young guy who is doing uh, a private lesson for five days a week, just after your session, for the last five months. He is in IT. 
in these five months he did 10 certifications in specialized services of IT. 10 certifications, can you imagine? Which takes about one certification, minimum takes six months. I have the proof. <laughs> I'll send you all those 10 certifications. And he secured not less than 98%. That is the power of meditation. When you get rid of these five groups of thoughts, keep it that is non-painful. Throw what is non, what is painful in your life. You will have ample time in your life to do the practice regularly, to listen to it, to contemplate and reflect. If you analyze 24 hours a day, at least waking hours, if it is 15 hours, think of it, minimum one third of the time is wasted in these five groups of thoughts that is not at all required. Just analyze every day, become aware. Is thought required? No. Why these thoughts are coming? Drop it. The mind will be lighter. I can tell you one third of the time, minimum, if you are, if your waking hours is 15 hours, five hours is wasted. In unwanted thoughts, you invite some of them, you invite them. Some of them enters into your mind by default and out of that five hour, can you spend one hour daily? <laughs> Use the rest four hours for you. <laughs> Just, I'm not saying that you need not, you need more explanation. Just follow this week. Remi remind yourself this is this belongs to this group of the thought okay do i need that no drop it from the very first day you will find that you are relaxed completely you don't feel so much of tiredness and who knows within a week you will find out if you are sleeping for seven, hour seven hours you, the hours of the sleep will be reduced and you will remain Free and relaxed. My personal experience, maximum three and a half hours to four hours. Let us start our practice today. 